All right, welcome back, folks. We apologize. As, you know, we, <laughs> it, it's interesting. We're, we're learning lots of lessons here in our first major foray into spring or into baseball broadcast. We've done a few, you know, conference games, doubleheaders, different things for each of our PCSSD schools. This is the first time we've ever taken on an event of this size. And strike three called there as Ruffner sits down Mitchell, the first batter here of the fourth for the Mustangs. So he didn't miss anything. As, uh, as Mitchell strikes out. And so we are back up and rolling. But I think, I think part of our issue right now is we went from cloudy and really cold to uh, the sun now beating down on our equipment over here. And I think we may just have a few overheating issues, possibly. So also got a, at least a decent size crowd of folks in here. And that ball hit right back up the middle into center field. That'll go down for a base hit. So hopefully no more issues the rest of the way. I have to go grab the canopy out of the press box to cover up our stuff. It keeps doing that. Well, I think I think it's a combination of the the heat. I don't know if the heat's as big of an issue as when you're using a computer and you're saving all these replay clips and everything. It kills your memory real quick. And so I went in and deleted a lot of those video files that have taken up some space on my computer. And I think that's, I'm hoping that, you know, I'll do that between every game now. And hopefully that fixes it because I just deleted like 60 gigabytes of video files. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping that fixes the issue and we're good to go the rest Oof. of the day. Big swing there from Day. Chandler Day swing and a miss. Tennessee signee, Martin, down at first base. One away here in the bottom of the fourth. Mustangs lead it three to nothing. Ruffner in at pitcher. Runner goes. Boy, he got a great jump. Penfield guns him, but he's safe as Martin was able to slide in underneath that one. So Martin now into scoring position for Chandler Day. Looking at a one-two count. One-two pitch from Ruffner. On the way. And that one, strike three called on the outside corner. So Ruffner retires Day. And that will bring Bland to the plate. Next up, designated hitter number three, Colin Bland. So Colin Bland steps in with them with the great shoe game there in the box. So, yeah, his shoes are anything but bland. He's a week out from it being Easter. So Ruffner set. Bland with that open stance. Martin out at second. Pitch from Ruffner. Burns rubber. 1 0. Blazer fans start to stream into the. Stadium here. That one low and inside. 2-0. and oh. It's an absolutely beautiful day to come support your team out here at the park. It it has quickly. I mean, it, it was like a – like. It wasn't early. Somebody turned the page to sunshine, and bam, here we are. It is beautiful out here now. I could not say that four hours ago. No. 2 0 -oh. Called strike on the outside corner. See, you'd be proud of me. I you wanted to call that a ball, and I waited. It's all about where the ball crosses the plate, not where it ends up in the mid. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so the two-one from Ruffner. 
And strike two on the outside corner. Bland doesn't agree, but you can't watch the first pitch in that spot. And let one and then, come that's even closer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Ruff did a good job kind of backdoor that one in there, but oh, that is a good pitch. Oof. Ooh. Ruffner didn't miss by much on the inside corner. Not sure if he said that was up in or both, but that'll load the count. Three and two to Bland. Ruffner trying to get out of the inning. That one lifted. Center field. Center fielder got a beat on it. Makes the play. And so that'll retire the Mustangs here in the bottom half of the fourth. No runs. For the Mustangs, we'll head to the fifth. Hornets trail it three to nothing here at the Robinson Invitational. Brought to you by Natural State Sports. Welcome back, baseball fans, Mustang fans, Hornet fans. As the Hornets come to bat here. I'd say it's getting late. It's time to see if we can get some runs, or if we, if Brian can get some runs on the board here. But, uh, you know, the Mustangs have done well on the mound. Is this a new pitcher? Nah, it's still Beasley. And so Beasley, that one well. smoked down the left field line into the corner. That's going to be at least two. And he's off to the races here into second base standing up. Well, that's one way to start it, right? And he's Braylon Coger. So Coger with a double to lead things off. And the wind has really picked up to right field again. There's the flag nearly stiff out there. And now Hank Penfield will bat. It's interesting. It's a weird win, though, because I don't feel any of it. I know it. Well, <laughs> It's I, a straight win. Uh, yeah, We're it's straight across. And today. We've got a little bit of block yeah. helping anyway, but, yeah, you're right. I, now, honestly, though, I'd take a little bit of the win now. It's funny how the day changed. I'm still over here with my hoodie on. Ooh, that part of the breeze actually doesn't feel terrible. I can, we can live with that. But it can stop. <laughs> Ooh, Beasley catches the inside corner. Strike one to Penfield. I can see that on the screen. <laughs> I mean, why am I even here? I'll just, I'll just stop talking. Uh, y'all can, y'all can listen. You love to fill the airways with your voice. I know it. That was ball one. They can see that. Yeah, I know. It was wide enough that there was really no reason to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So the 1-1 one, one here from Beasley. Beasley's gone the whole way so far for the Mustangs. They're going to back pick, and he's back. Shortstop tried to sneak in there. Didn't sneak very well. No. 
He is a uh, a bit of a shorter fella, so he ought to be able to hide his way through there. And now we got time at the plate. As Penfield steps out. You know what's funny is when I was in uh, league ball back in Bryant, I played for Penfield. It was our sponsor. <laughs> And that one inside, ball two. Penfield folks, a staple in the real estate world in Bryant. Now Hank Penfield awaiting the 2-1. And he rockets that one deep left field. Left fielder going back to the wall, off the wall. Hoger rounds third. He's headed for home. Cutoff man, throw to the plate, and he is out. What a play as the left fielder. A shot to the shortstop who cut it off, and he makes a BB throw to the plate. Koger cut down trying to score. What a play there by the Mustangs. That was nice. Was a nice piece of hitting, but just as good of defense to come back and keep that score or run from scoring. You know, the impressive piece to that, too, for the Mustangs is, you know, it's always uh, you're, you're so used to most ballparks. You're playing a ball off of a fence, a chain link or something, and this ball comes off of that metal fencing. It's going to come off weird. It's even got some, some grooves, you know, grooves yeah. in it, so the ball could go anywhere. It's a great play by the Mustang left fielder to play the carom and get that ball in quickly and then give the shortstop a ton of credit as uh, – Got it back, to, got it to the catcher for a perfect yeah. strike to to down the runner at home. Martin showing why he's headed to Tennessee with that play from short. And strike. And, boy, they tried to back pick, and that one gets into center field. That's going to let Penfield go to third. So, Penfield, after the pickoff attempt went out into the outfield, Penfield advances to third. And so now with one away, the Hornets with another scoring opportunity here. It'd be be it would behoove them to <laughs> score here. Will over here Just using one out. big educated, college educated words and stuff. Well, if you would have went to college for Morton Pargan. <laughs> <laughs> There's strike two. Excuse me, sir. I went to a small private Christian school. We didn't. SNU, we they didn't party. We didn't party oh, no, there. SNU. <laughs> no, they are a party school. I won't talk about the number of times I had to sneak into the basement windows of the dorms. <laughs> 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 They've done sell them up because of that. And strike three as Beasley sits down, Duncan, and so Duncan makes his way. Back over to the dugout. And now Hudson Thomason will bat with two away. This Houston team, man, it's a solid club. The Hornets had a great opportunity to score on that hit by Penfield off the left field wall. Coger got cut down at the plate. Now a strikeout. Two outs as the nine-hole hitter. Hudson Thomason bats. Baseball is a funny game. We saw it though in the last one. I mean, Beasley. You know, get Thomason to chase. And like you said last night, in the Arkansas game where. Now, Auburn's pitcher <laughs> struck him out and struck out the side, but yet they he gave up what three, three runs, runs yeah. that inning. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like three strikeouts but three earned runs. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good beautiful. pitch, man! And that, that's almost unhittable. Mm -hmm. A pitch right over the black on the outside corner. Not a lot Thomason can do with that. Even if Thomason can get a piece of it. All he's going to be able to do is probably spoil it and hit it foul. Didn't he say this pitcher's a sophomore? I can tell you. He is. Sophomore. Jesus. Yep. And that one, that Beasley does get a piece of that one. That ball hit it foul. And it'll get down against the fence. And we need to send this link to, to the Arkansas pitching coach. 
just for this. We you know sophomore, <laughs> right? I mean. You know, Hobbs. You know, Hobbs had his uh, his hands full last night and to play head coach for the yeah. Razorbacks. Congratulations to Grandpa Goat as uh, Dave Van Horn welcomes three, three, yes, three grandchildren, triplets, and then he hopped on a private jet and back to Auburn today. He needs a ring before we can call him the Goat. And that'll score Penfield most likely, and it does. There I go again about getting myself in trouble. But Penfield scores. That'll cut the lead down to three to one. It's Thomason looking at a one-two count here after the wild pitch. That was pass ball. Yeah, he should he should have caught it. That's why I'm not the official scorekeeper. But you're right, it was it was a pass ball, yeah. Now Beasley. That's low. Close, close. Catcher really <laughs> tried framing that. Well, it was a little low. That's a tough one to, to sit on if you're Thomason, but he gets away with it there. So now the count two and two. Or three. Is it three and two or two and two? It's three and two. Right. I thought that we were ball behind on the big scoreboard. All right. So full count, sorry. And that one fouled off to the right side. That'll get out of play. And now, now how big was that play by Martin in the left fielder to cut down Koger at the plate? And now Beasley, 3-2 pitch is low and away for ball four. I don't know that too many of the Mustang fans agree with it. And that will draw a visit from the Mustang pitching coach. That will be it for Beasley. That's not the pitching coach. That is actually head coach. Yeah. That's Coach McCarter. So Beasley's day is done. After four and two thirds, he's still responsible for Thomason down at first. Or did we get a pin? No. Thomason's still down there. But with the Hornets flipping back to the top of the order here, we'll bring in a new pitcher. And that new, is that nine? Yeah. It is, it's nine. So new pitcher into the game for the Mustangs, number nine, Owen Wagner. Wagner, a 2025 player. For those of you who can't add years, that would be a junior. Look, with all the different and I'm really speaking to myself. We're trying to keep up with and everything. I have a hard time. Like, no one, like, you're always talking about the different basketball players coming up and stuff, and you're like, class of 20, 26, 27, 25. <laughs> I'm like, hold on, what year are we in now? Where it really starts to throw me off, though, is when we get towards the end of the years. And so I start talking about it like a 20, and I'm thinking, hey, he's a sophomore. That's a 26 kid. Like, even with Lanier and those guys when they were freshmen, I, I'm like, they're, they're freshmen, they're 26. Wait, no, they're, tw they're, they're sophomores. They're, they're, <laughs> it, it throws me off every time. Wonder, just out of curiosity. Let's see something. New picture, please. The new picture for the most things is number nine, Owen Wagoner. Next up for the Hornets, number 10, Grant Johnson. So back to the top of the order, Grant Johnson will hit. The PA announcer cracks me up. He's, your attention, please. <laughs> now I was hoping Max Preps would have some stats, but they do not. 
this Houston team. All right, Twitter, I get it. Kevin Bohannon tweeted. I don't need an update from literally every account we have. I love you, Cabo. But uh, I don't need, and that's not Cabo's fault. But, uh, apparently, we have his uh, we have his tweets on notify. Yeah, during baseball season, it's a must. It really is. If you don't, you should. Yeah. Uh, Bohannon is the baseball guru, even if that's anointed by Mr. Randy Rainwater. He really is. Runner bluffs and goes back. It's Thomason, and count goes to one and one. And we hope you guys are enjoying the broadcast this weekend, and hopefully next year we'll be able to do this at every site. Now they'll try to backpick Thomason, but he's back. Oh, no, no. Don't be you, – you, you asked if you were biting off more than you could chew with just this one site. No, we're doing four next year. It's happening. Oh, it's happening. Gosh. We're gonna get ready. To, we're going to have to get sponsors specifically for this tournament. I'll be fine. Coach, be what's his name, Delaney? Delaney, we'll work yeah, it out. Let's get it. We'll work it out. I mean, you know, with all them schools we're adding for football in the fall, we'll have the equipment. Wait, 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 what? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I guess you've been making behind-the-scene deals, and I've got to train all these new people. What? Yeah, you got some work to do, sir. Oh, no. <laughs> Everyone oh, there goes. And good piece of hitting on the hit and run. That's going to allow the runner to get to third. So, Thomason will – oh, I'm just kidding. I did it again. And he dropped it. And that will allow Johnston to slide into second. And uh, boy, I about did it again. I thought they were going to get picked off again. But the ball got dropped. Just a little bit of luck in that. Next up, number 19, Blake. Blake Scoggins. So now Blake Scoggins will hit, and he's got a chance to tie or take the lead here. Or if he takes the lead, he's going to have to put. Oh, that is a good pitch. A Wagner there. So now Scoggins behind 0 and 1. Johnston at second, Thomason at third. And that time, oh, that's a car. Or did it go too far up that way? I think it went too far up there. <laughs> Darn kids. That's my Wagner. Outside. What is the count? One, two. That's what I thought. Okay. There we go. And the one, one, two from Wagner. And That's it. strike three. But he's got to throw him out at first to complete it, and he does. And so. Hornets score one, but that's it. They leave two stranded at second and third. And after four and a half, Mustangs lead this one three to, no, three to one. We'll head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Mustangs coming to bat.
Bud. We are back here at the seventh annual Robinson Invitational from Robinson High School, one of four sites. I think 46 teams in total. And the Mustangs coming to bat here in the bottom of the fifth. And Ruffner's first one in the carpet for ball one. Now the 1-0 from Ruffner. That's a good pitch. Just misses. 2-0. Oh, swing and a miss. There's Donovan Mitchell. Couldn't catch up to that one. The count of two and one. Now the two one from Ruffner. And a swing and a miss for Mitchell again. That'll even up the count at two and two. Switching them out. And now the 2-2 two -two from Ruffner. Outside, full count. That ball lifted, center field, retreating to the wall all the way to the track. And making the catch, the center fielder for the Hornets. As I believe that was Jace Ham or Jace Hum out there making the catch. Uh, it's on it. I don't. Oh mine. Yeah. I think that's a zero one three. So 1 0. There's the catcher, Kidder bats. And Ruffin's 1 1. Kidder hits it to the right side. First baseman charging, plays it on a hop, steps on first for out number two. You know, it's funny, Will. I, I wear this hat quite often, and uh, it's a, my, my mom male baseball hat. And after spending the entire day at the baseball field on Thursday, 16 whole hours of being out here, apparently it transformed me because everybody I saw yesterday said, do you play baseball? Are you a baseball coach? Are you a baseball dad? You look like a baseball guy. So this one to the second baseman. Long run. Makes a great play. And over to first for the third out of the inning. So the Hornets quickly get the Mustangs off the field on that. In that bottom half of the fifth, we'll head to the sixth. Hornets trail three to one.
All right, so as we head to the sixth inning here, Hornets still got some work to do. Leading things off, it'll be Gideon Motes, the first baseman. And he'll face Owen Wagner, who comes out for his second inning of work after replacing Beasley. And Wagner ready to bring it. And Motes watches the breaking ball fall in for a strike. 0 and 1. Hornets had their chances in the fifth, but could only scratch across one run. Thanks in part to a great play as Yeomans out in the left field. Threw a strike on a ball off the wall to Martin at short. Another good pitch. And Martin threw a strike to the catcher to cut down Thomason. So Wagner returns to the mound as he faces Motes, the three-hole hitter. Motes waits the 0-2. Swing and a miss for Gideon Motes. There's the breaking stuff really working well for Owen Wagner. And so now Jace Ruffman will step in, or Ruffner, sorry. Jace Ruffner to bat. One away here in the top of the six. Hornets running out of outs. That one in the carpet for ball one. And the 1 0 here from Wagner. And right down the middle for strike one. And we got some Bryant fans getting a little frustrated at the high strike call. Uh, I think the umps have been pretty consistent. I do too. Uh, they've, they've, they've done well. They've had a few, but they're human. That's why we don't want robotic umpires. We like. I, I personally still enjoy the human element. I mean, the game is played by humans. Exactly. And there's going to be errors, just like, I mean, we can't say, well, if you make an error at first, we put a robot over there. Good pitch. I don't even know if a robot could hit Wagner right now. <laughs> That'd be tough. DJ Williams couldn't hit him. DJ thinks he's hit him I know. All. I know. <laughs> it's amazing. He's a he's not Major League Baseball. <laughs> I'm cutting this clip and posting it. <laughs> and strike three called as boy Wagner is in a zone right now. Another beautiful breaking pitch. Falls in over the plate for strike three. Ruffner takes the rough walk to the Hornet dugout. Two away here in the sixth. Hey, I'm a fan of Williams. He played for my Patriots. Oh, I like DJ Ranger a lot. Back. Don't get me wrong, I love DJ a lot. I it think just cracked me up when he said that. Mm -hmm. So, Koger bats. Actually, I, I'll, I'll say that I love that 10 to 1 segment now on the buzz. Like, I think Wes Moore's doing a good job, better job than neighbors did in the afternoon. But I tell you, Justin Acre and DJ Williams are fantastic together. And it's pretty cool to be able to listen. I, I'm, I have the radio on most of the day, and it's almost always on 103.7 The Buzz. And, uh, and you sure are promoting that station. It's cool, though. <laughs> well, you know, some people said I don't like them. I love those guys. They're, they're all good people. <laughs> but uh, – one of the parts that, one of, oh, there we go. One of the things that I like about DJ being on there is it's cool to to hear his experiences at the pro level, and be able to talk about some of the things. He was talking about the draft and uh, that whole process and the medical part and having to walk in there and nothing but basically like a speedo. Yeah, yeah it's pretty, pretty, pretty interesting. <sighs> so what I took from that was that you like that. Never mind. Don't even go there. Don't even ah. go there. <laughs> oh, I would say I'm sorry, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> You're not at all. Look, man, it's getting late. We don't need to go off the rails again like last night. And, and there's a chance Andy could show up this afternoon, so if we really want this to go off the rails, let Andy show up while we've already started the rails headed to the east because he'll, he'll drive them right 
off a- into the woods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the wind has totally changed now. It's, it's going out to uh, there, the center, <laughs> right center there. Oh, someone. That ball oh. ripped left field. If it's fair, it's trouble, yeah, and it's fair. Fair ball. fair ball into the corner. Rounding Adjective. is Koger. He's going for three, and he is gunned out at third. Another great play by the left fielder as he gunned it into Martin, and Martin cuts it off and gets it to third, right? Yep. Yep, and throws out. Is that Miles over at third base? So what a play once again. As this Mustang team is an elite defensive team. Looking good out there. So that'll do it for the six. Hornets threaten again, but can't get a run across. We'll head to the bottom half of the six with the Mustangs leading this one 3 1. All right, so Mustangs come to bat. We've got a pinch hitter, I think. Yeah, Brady Moffitt. Who is Moffitt hitting for? I said his name earlier. I think he came in as a runner, didn't he? He may have been a courtesy runner. Alan Lowe. Didn't Moffitt come in as a runner earlier? Did I miss that? Am I crazy? He come in as a runner earlier, or has he been in the? Okay. Who did he replace? Do you know? Do you have it? Ball hit out to right field. Thank you. Caught by the right fielder as Moffitt replaced Yeomans. He lines out to right field for out number one here in the sixth. And so now the right fielder, James Fenton, will bat. Ruffner still out there for the Hornets. That ball hit to the right side. Played by the first baseman, Motes. Out number two. So now back to the top of the order, Ryan Mitchell. Ryan Mitchell headed to Georgia Tech to play his college ball. Ruffner brings the first. Mitchell to the shortstop. Crossed first, and that'll do it. So Mustangs go in order in the sixth. Hornets coming up in the seventh. Got three outs to figure this one out. Join us right here. The seventh inning of the Robinson Invitational on Natural State Sports.
top of the seventh for the Hornets. Number four, Braylon Coger. So Braylon Coger will lead things off here in the seventh. Hornets need two to keep this one going. And the first one inside, strike one. Hey, you Bryant fans that watch this game, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, you know, that's our mission is to give these athletes all the footage and exposure they deserve, all Ooh. the hard work they do. Wagner with another good breaking pitch, 0-2. Oh and hey, and, and I'll give, give the folks over at Bryant credit. They've got a very good student-led live stream broadcast. They do a good job with theirs. 0-2 oh, outside. 1-2. and two. And the one two from Wagner. The ball hit left center field. That's trouble going back off the wall. Coger. Triple. Now he needs to stop oh, at second yeah. as Coger does. And so a leadoff double. And boy, I tell you. He didn't play the seam right. <laughs> This Houston team is very good defensively. They really have been. They, they have played almost every carom and bounce possible today. They have played it on the dot. You know, and that's something at all levels of baseball, but especially when you get to the youth levels and high school level, the one thing you always want to do is put pressure on a fielder. Make them make a perfect throw. And Bryant's tried to do that a couple of times today, and the Mustangs have answered by making perfect throws and making great plays. That time, Coger made a good choice, and as did Coach Bach to hold the runner at second, leadoff double. Does you no good to get cut down at third. So Penfield, who put one off the left field wall earlier, but then the runner got cut down at the plate trying to score. So we'll see how they handle it this time. Penfield awaits the 1-0. That one outside, 2-0. and oh. They had some late game heroics in the game before this. As Cabot came back to beat Tahlequah in the seventh. Oh. 2-0 pitch, called a strike, 2-1. Well, the 2 1 from Wagner. We got a timeout granted here at the plate. It's Pinfield those, asked for time. Are those the Bryant players or the Valley View players Where? chanting? It's the Bryant players. It's okay. pretty sure. Yeah, it's the Bryant players. It's the Bryant dugout. A little buzz. The ball fouled. Oof. Pinfield fouled that right off his leg. Get his ankle. That is never fun. Until we get, you know, usually these guys, <laughs> that shin guard on, that ankle guard. Yeah, he doesn't have yeah. anything on. Well, he's a catcher. Ah, well, okay. there you go. <laughs> Catchers are the rough, <laughs> rugged guys. You know how tough a catcher is. So. Penfield shakes it off. It's funny, though, the worst hit Penfield's taken today was right there. He's been behind the plate all day, and that's the hard, that's the worst one he's taken. So now the 2-2. Two -two. Oh, that's oh. a great pitch. Wagner it's across the outside corner. Penfield doesn't agree, shakes his head as he heads to the dugout. Nothing worse than fouling a ball off your foot like that and coming back and having a bender just bring you up like that. And now pinch hitter hitting for Duncan is Ridge Sutherland. Sutherland with Coger out at second. Man, that is that is filthy. That's a mean pitch. <laughs> Nasty and mean. 
And if you're the Hornets, I mean, you've just got to be sitting back waiting on that because it is the one pitch that Wagner can get over the plate. You know when he needs one, he's coming to it. Oh, but <laughs> even when you know it's coming, you can't hit it. And Wagner ahead 0-2 here on the pinch hitter, Sutherland. The 0-2 from Wagner. Got him. Wagner, three straight breaking pitches. Sits down Sutherland. And now the Hornets are down to their last out. When did, when did he come in to pitch? Last inning? Two innings. This is his third inning. Okay. Yeah, he replaced Beasley in the middle of the, oh, yeah, the fifth. fifth. So he'll, I think, I don't remember how many out. Two and a third, like two and two thirds, something like that, yeah. Two and two thirds. That one in the carpet for ball one. As this is Hudson Thomason, second baseman. Base hit would bring it to three to two. Get something up in that jet stream going to right. Have a tie ball game. Nine hole hitter. And this is where you got to make sure you see a ton of pitches if you're Hudson Thomason because the number one thing you want to make happen here is, one, you want to get that runner in. But, well, number one, you want to get on base and flip the top, to the top of the order here. Get yep. Grant Johnson to the plate any way you can here. And Wagner. Outside, 2-0. Yeah, you definitely don't want to end the game without with the top of the lineup looming. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just tough. And then on the other side of that here, Wagner doesn't want to lose Thomason and give the top of the order in Grant Johnson a chance. Johnson has had a good day today, a couple doubles. And now the 2-0 from Wagner on Thomason. It's on its way. That's high and inside, 3-0. and oh. I think he may be feeling the pressure of closing this game out. The last out is always the hardest out to get. Mm -hmm. And especially a close game like this when the tying, game, tying runs at the plate. Here comes that bender for a strike. Well, they'll let him probably have this one. No chance that Thomason has a green light here. That's ball oh. four. Yep. So he went to the fastball. And to your point, I'm surprised because the bender has been the one to get him a strike. And now and here comes a pitching change. Let's see if they're going to make the change. Bringing in the first baseman. All right. you know. He's still not taking the ball from him. While we have a pause in the action, I'll get the that's the. That's not McCarter, is it? I can't. They, they look fairly. No, that's not McCarter. I was about to say that's the pitching McCarter coach. That's not McCarter. McCarter doesn't have that goatee like this guy does. I'm not sure who that is. But that's yeah. Let's say McCarter would have come out. So they'll stick with Wagner. But Bryant, that's exactly what you want. And right now, I tell you what, if Johnston can put something in the air to right field, it's going to go a long way. That wind is whipping straight out into the woods behind the big monster over there. Yeah, if you can hit it to the monster, you're going to tie the game up. Mm -hmm. Well, well yeah, we you'll say that, but yeah, this, I'm about to say this defense <laughs> is really good. No doubt. All right, so Johnson steps in. Two away, runners at first and second. Mustangs lead it by two. First one up and in, ball one. And suddenly, Wagner can't find the zone. Uh, yeah. Houston's already cut down one run and cut down another person at third, so. Now the 1-0. There's a strike. And so now Johnson. A short stop. A couple doubles on the day. He awaits the 1-1. Step off. We got time. Do they call box in high school? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. say because that's something we've not seen all weekend. I, I I half thought that's what he said initially. I almost because the way he stepped into it. Oh, 
That was nasty. <laughs> now go back to our point to a minute ago. The game with that swing. Well, but going back to what we were saying a minute ago, he's had so much success with the with the breaking stuff, and he just comes right at him with a fastball there and blows it by. And that's a good pitch. Now Thomason. Or sorry, not Thomason. Down to the last Wagner. Strike. Oh, got him to chase. Wagner sits down Johnson. And the Mustangs are victorious here at the Robinson Invitational with a three to one victory over the Bryan Hornets. So that's gonna do it for game three of the day. And uh, we will be back here in about 15 to 20 minutes as this Houston Mustangs team will do battle with the Valley View Blazers in about 20 minutes. So, appreciate you guys joining us. We'll see you back here in a few minutes. For Will Watkins, I'm Steve Henson. This has been the Robinson Invitational on Natural State Sports.